counsel's investigation of President Clinton. On Monday, the House Judiciary Committee released about 12 hours of tapes, including Secret Service testimony, Ambassador Bill Richardson, and members of his staff. Up next, about 45 minutes with Mona Sutphin, a Foreign Service officer who worked in the office of Ambassador Richardson. My name is Craig W. Murphy, and I'm employed by Deposition Services Incorporated. The date today is May 27, 1998. The time is approximately 12:11 p.m. This deposition is being held at 2101 L Street Northwest, Washington, D.C. Name of the witness is Ms. Mona Sutton. This deposition of this, I'm sorry, uh, this deposition of Ms. Sutton has been taken by the Office of Independent Counsel in Ray Grand Jury Investigation. This time, the attorneys will identify themselves, please. Uh, Thomas H. Beener, Jr. Craig has learning. Now the court reporter will identify herself and swear in witness. My name is Elizabeth Eastman. Ms. Sutphin, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear under penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, ma'am, once again, my name is uh, Thomas Peter, and along with Craig Lerner, we're a Associate Independent Counsel, okay. which in essence means we're attorneys working for the Independent okay. Counsel's Office. Okay. Uh, let me give you a couple of admonitions, uh, kind of ground rules for how we're going to proceed. First of all, we're doing this as though it were before the grand jury, okay. as an accommodation to you um, and uh, your counsel. We've agreed that we would do it in this setting and then show the video to the grand jury as mm -hmm. opposed to making you physically come down there. But all other rules apply as if you were in front of the grand jury, okay? Okay. And what that means is a couple of things. First of all, just for a, from a practical standpoint, let me point out to you that the court reporter is going to make a, a transcript of everything that's said. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we do a couple of things. Number one, that we try to answer with words instead of gestures, because she can't take down gestures. Okay. And number two, that we try not to talk over each other, because it's hard for her to get down when two or people are speaking at once, and it'll make the videotape or audio portion a little more difficult, too. Okay? Okay. Now, in terms of a grand jury appearance, you have a couple of important uh, rights, and then you have a very extremely important obligation. So let me tell you your rights first. As with any witness before the grand jury, you have a Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate yourself. And what that means is you have an absolute right not to answer any question that you believe in good faith. The answer could subject you to criminal liability. Do you understand that? Yes. And what that means is that you, uh, a question that you believe that the answer might uh, it somehow implicate you in a criminal act. Do you right. understand that? Yeah. Do you have any questions about your Fifth Amendment right? No. Secondly, you have a right to be represented by counsel, and you can consult with your counsel about the appearance. You can even meet with your counsel during your grand jury testimony. The only uh, limitation on that is the attorney cannot actually be in the room with us, but he can be in the room next door. Do you understand that? Yes. And you are represented by counsel today, correct? Yes. And what's his name? Justin Simon. And Mr. Simon, um, in fact, is next door, and we're at his offices of Dick Stein Shapiro, correct? Correct. And then finally, you have an extremely important obligation, and that's to tell the truth. As you just noticed, the uh, court reporter put you under oath. Mm -hmm. This is a duly impaneled fed federal grand jury investigation, and anything you say here is subject to the penalty of perjury. Now, perjury is the knowingly making of a false statement um, upon being asked a question, or the knowingly withholding information that you know to be responsive to the question. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you have any questions about what perjury is? No. And let me also advise you that uh, perjury is a, is a crime, and if someone is prosecuted and convicted of perjury, they can face up to five years in jail and a fine of up to $250,000. Do you understand that? Yes. Any questions? No. Nope. All right. Where do you work? <laughs> I'm a career foreign service officer <coughs> employed by the Department of State in Washington, D.C. And who specifically do you work for now? I work for the U.S. Mission to the U.N., and I'm assigned to Ambassador Bill Richardson. And how long have you worked for Ambassador Bill Richardson? Uh, a year and a month. Did you sit in on an interview with Monica Lewinsky on October 31st of 1997? Yes, I did. Prior to that interview, when was the first time that you would have heard anything or learned anything about Ms. Lewinsky? Uh, the evening before. So that would have been the 30th? The 30th, right. Mm -hmm. Actually, perhaps we should just again introduce the calendar just for future. Okay, why don't we do that? Okay. And what's the exhibit number on that one? It is one. So we started over with it. Okay. What we're doing is just to make things a little easier, we use a calendar oh. and then you okay. can. Okay. 
keep track of what days were what. So right. the okay. 31st was a Friday, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, right. So you believe the first time you would have had any involvement in anything relating to Ms. Lewinsky would have been the 30th, correct? Yes, correct. correct. Right. Now, did you ever see a copy of her resume prior to the interview? Yes. When would you have seen the resume? Um, on the afternoon of the 30th. Okay. And if we could go ahead and place before Ms. Sutfa what we'll call because this one actually has an IW number two, A number on it. Okay. And tell us, ma'am, if you recognize what that is. Yes. Is that the resume that you saw of Ms. Lewinsky? Yes, it is. All right. Now, this resume, if you look at the top of it, it mm -hmm. shows that it was faxed on October 21st, which would have been approximately 10 days before the interview, correct? Correct. Um, is it accurate, ma'am, though, that you would not have seen it when it was faxed over? Correct. I didn't see it. And you didn't no, see it until the 30th? Correct. So is it also accurate, ma'am, that you would have had no involvement prior to the 30th in any discussions with anyone about whether to schedule her for an interview, when to schedule her for an interview, et cetera? Correct. Yeah, I had no knowledge of it before. That. And therefore, I, I assume it's also accurate that you would not have participated in any telephone calls <coughs> with Ms. Lewinsky prior to October 30th? Uh, correct. What's your uh, phone extension? It's And where is your office physically located in relation to, for example, Ms. Watkins' desk and Ambassador Richardson's desk? Um, the office is shaped kind of in an L. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Richardson's office is at the end of the L. Um, Ms. Watkins' office is, I'd say, the closest office to Ambassador Richardson's office, but it's not directly adjacent to that. And then I'm basically two offices down from Isabel. There's one office between us, but it's kind of an open area. People walk in and out. Okay. What I'm going to do is have placed before you three exhibits that are various phone records. Okay. And are we using new numbers or? Uh, yeah. Okay. So these, I guess, will be MS 2, 3, and 4. Is that right? Let's see what number we're going with. I'd suggest to you the easiest thing to do, <coughs> because unfortunately they bounce back and forth chronologically, would just be to lay the three out yeah, in front of you as I've done, and then we'll try to go in order, okay. beginning with the 30th. Okay. Okay, so you have... Uh, and then right. whatever order is good for you, and then I'm going to... Okay. Okay, ma'am, now I'll just represent to you that Exhibits 2 and 3 mm -hmm. are records that Independent Counsel's Office obtained from your office in okay. response to subpoenas for any phone records relating to calls involving Ms. Lewinsky. Okay. Um, one of the records, I believe it's Exhibit 2, indicates calls from your office or your people in your That's offices sweet, right? to Ms. Lewinsky's Pentagon office number, the 703 number, okay. and Exhibit 3 represents or identifies calls from your offices to Ms. Lewinsky's home number, which is... Right, okay. And then finally, um, Exhibit 4 indicates calls by Ms. Lewinsky from different numbers or different phones to your offices at the Pentagon. I'm, I'm sorry. At the, at the mission? Yes. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, kind of walking our way through this, and what I've done is just sort of drawn a line for myself, beginning with the 30th, so we don't go over the calls that predate that. Okay. I'm going to make a line on your copies as well, just so we don't okay. confuse ourselves even more. Right. You might want to do the yeah. same on sure. that document. Right. Okay. okay. Now, starting with the 30th, <coughs> there are um, four calls, I believe, indicated on the 30th. The first one indicated is going to be at <laughs> 101 in the afternoon. Okay. A call that goes from extension right. to Ms. Lewinsky's Pentagon number, and that call was uh, 1 minute and 18 seconds. <coughs> it is then followed by a call at 11. Let's see, make sure I'm looking at these right. I think. Right. Um, am I looking at the right one here? 10 and 11. Oh, wait, let me come back over here. No, okay. Let's Up go here. to this side. Okay. We then have two more calls, one at 
1645 or 445 from extension for 42 seconds to Ms. Lewinsky's home number. Another call at uh, 528 mm -hmm. from Ms. Watkins assigns number to Ms. Lewinsky's home number. Okay. And then finally, um, we have a call if we come over to this side, yeah. which is from Ms. Lewinsky's phone at the Pentagon to extension. Okay. You see that one? Yep. Now, first of all, all four of these calls then are either to or from extension. Do you see that? Yes. Is that an extension that you would use? Uh, sometimes, okay. yes. Do you believe that you participated in any of these calls? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, do you believe that you made any calls to Ms. Lewinsky on the 30th? I did make a call to Ms. Lewinsky on the 30th. Okay, and from what phone do you believe you would have made that call? I don't remember. I think it was from the, once we got to Washington. Okay. So in, other in words, the evening. All right, so, so you believe, which would explain perhaps why there's no record on the stuff we got from New York related correct. to that call. Correct. Um, what would have been the conversation that you had with Ms. Lewinsky? Uh, I called her to arrange to meet the next, the next morning. Um, Isabel had moved the appointment around a couple of times, which is probably why there's so many calls back and forth. Um, and I wanted to make sure, confirm that she was still planning on coming, what time it was, the appointment was set for, and then arrange to meet her in the lobby to take her up to the ambassador's suite. Okay, and, d and did you make such arrangements? Yes. All right. Now, the next day was the actual interview, correct? Correct. Right. And who was present at the interview? Um, I was there, Ambassador Richardson, obviously, Monica Lewinsky, and our chief of staff, Rebecca Cooper, was there as well. What was your understanding up until, the, let's take the time frame from when you first learned she was interviewing up to the time you literally walked in and met her. Mm -hmm. What was your understanding of what she was interviewing for? Um, a, a job in, well, I knew of two openings. Um, there was one that I, I knew our chief of staff was interested in, which was um, a public affairs related um, position in New York. There was also an opening that uh, was coming open in our protocol office. And where was that? The protocol in New York. And what was your understanding of, oh, first of all, how did you know that Ms. Lewinsky was interviewing for a position in New York as, for, as opposed, for example, to in a position in Washington? Uh, we didn't know that until we talked to her okay. in the interview. Did you have any discussions with Ambassador Richardson about Ms. Lewinsky prior to the interview? Uh, no, I asked him whether or not he wanted to, uh, in the evening on the 30th as we were headed down to Washington, I asked him whether or not he wanted to look at her resume, and he said, no, just make sure you have it for me in the morning beforehand. Um, so beyond that, no. And then in the morning, I, I put it in his suite. So during the interview, she indicated um, to you and presumably Ambassador Richardson and, and who else, Ms. Cooper, mm -hmm. who was present, that she wanted to work in New York? Uh, yes. I, wasn't, I, didn't, I was kind of in and out of the room. I was doing other, other things, mm -hmm. looking in the suite. but. Um, <coughs> It became, I don't know how it became clear to me that she was interested in a job in New York, but I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. so. Now, following the interview, did you... I could stop mm -hmm. for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, on October 30th was the first time you heard Monica Lewinsky's name. Yes, Is that correct? correct. How did that come up? Um, I normally go over the schedule for the next day, mm -hmm. and if there are things on it that I don't know what it is, then I'll try and figure out who put something on the schedule and whether or not he's going to need anything in preparation for it. So I asked Isabel, you know, who, who is Monica Lewinsky and why are we meeting with her and what do I need for that meeting? And what did she say? She said, oh, this is somebody <coughs> Ambassador Richardson has agreed to talk to. Um, she is at the, at the Defense Department and he, I have a copy of her resume and you should take it down. So I did just that. Okay, now let's go ahead and place in front of you um, a couple of exhibits. Let me do these two. And there'll be, I guess, MS, what do we have to, five? Five will be the first one, and MS, six. Uh, five. Oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. <laughs> Okay. 
Mr. Mim, if you just look at Exhibit 5 first, which is, uh, I'll represent to you, that is a copy of a letter that's dated at the top, November 2nd, 1997, um, that was taken off of Ms. Lewinsky's computer. Okay. Retrieved from her computer. And you'll note it starts off with Dear Betty. Yeah. And what I want to point your attention to, and I'll go ahead and bracket it, and you're certainly welcome to read as much of the letter as you'd like, but I want to point your attention to the paragraph that I, um, have bracketed bracket. on Exhibit 5 and ask you to read that to yourself. Okay. First of all, if you look at the calendar, if we take the date of uh, November 2nd, uh, right. that's um, a Sunday. Right. And that's the Sunday immediately after the interview with Ms. Lewinsky, correct? Correct. All right. Now, if you look at that first line of the paragraph, I bracketed. Mm -hmm. um, I became a bit nervous this weekend when I realized that Ambassador Richardson said his staff would be in touch with me this week. And then it goes on to talk about mm -hmm. what should I say, et cetera. Um, and I guess the question I have is, do you n recall at the interview mm -hmm. on the 31st, was there ever, was there any indication to Ms. Lewinsky that you recall that someone would be in touch with her the next week? Um, I remember when I, not at the interview itself, but when I, I walked her down after the interview down to the lobby, mm -hmm. and uh, at that point I said that somebody would be in touch with her. I don't think I said, though, that particular week, but I said in the next week or so. Okay. So you believe that you would have, at a minimum, you would have said something along those lines. Is that right. accurate? Yeah. That's right. accurate. Now, if you look at the next document, which is going to be MS6, I guess, mm -hmm. I'm going to do the same thing here, and I'm going to bracket once again. I think it's the second paragraph. Okay. First of all, I'll represent to you that this is an email okay. that was obtained through the investigation sent, and if you look at the top, from Monica Lewinsky right. to a friend of hers named C.A. Davis in Japan, mm -hmm. and that the oh, okay. right. date or time on the email from Ms. Lewinsky shows November 5th at 2.16 a.m., so it would have been in three morning. hours in the morning, so at least based on that date, I, I think that would represent the document indicates it was written, say, the night of the 4th and into the morning of the 5th. Fifth. Fifth, right. All right. And if you could just read the paragraph that I have. Okay. Okay, have you read it? Yep. All right, now first of all, if we look at that, mm -hmm. and looking at the, the time frame at least indicated on the email, right. the night of the 4th, morning of the 5th, right. um, is it accurate that the Friday before right. was the day that you and Ms. Cooper and Ambassador Richardson interviewed Ms. Lewinsky? Correct. Right. Um, also goes on to say, Richardson is a great guy, and I met two women who work for him, also very cool. And is it, it is accurate that the people who did the interview were yourself, another female, and the ambassador. Is Correct. That right? Yeah. Then it says, yesterday Richardson called me at work and told me they were going to offer me a position. They didn't know what yet, and they wanted to talk with me further. Let me keep that in mind mm -hmm. and then um, direct your attention to, I believe it's going to be exhibit two. And I'll put a little asterisk by the call I'm directing attention to. And that's another phone record obtained from your office. Right. That indicates that on November 3rd at 11.02 a.m., 
-hmm. There was a two minute and 54 second call from extension with the name William Richardson assigned to it mm -hmm. to Ms. Lewinsky's Pentagon number. Do you see that? Correct. Yes, is. is it accurate that a job offer was extended to Ms. Lewinsky on November 3rd? Uh, I don't remember exactly whether or not it was the 3rd, but there was a job offer extended to her within the week after. Namely, so, within the week I mean, after her interview? Yeah. So the, the offer, you're I aware thought of it? it was a week to 10 days, but... But you're aware there was some sort of offer conveyed? Yes. Do you know how the offer was conveyed? Yes. How was it? Um, I called her um, uh, and offered her a position in the office, uh, told her that we wanted to bring her on to do a public affairs type job that we had discussed in the interview, um, and told her that I wanted, we wanted to set up a time to bring her to New York okay. to discuss details. Now, do you believe that this is the call that you would have made? Uh, I believe, is there another one between that time and... There are, just so you'll know, to kind right. of make it complete, and we can kind of skim down. There are calls so that you know kind of the, the sum total of the calls. We have that call on November 3rd. Right. Then if you look over here, there are a couple of calls on the 14th. I'm sorry, it's one call. It just shows twice. Oh, okay. There's a call on the 14th right. to extension. Okay. There's also a call on the 24th. Right. That goes to your extension. Okay. And, oh, and there was a call I, I missed in, in between this. There's a call on the 19th, 19th right. to your extension as well. Yeah, those are all too late. So, yes, that probably was the call. Okay. Meaning the November 3rd the call? The November 3rd call. Okay. Now, how would you wind up calling from the number? How does that work? Um, it's on my telephone. We all, in our suite, all have all of the extensions of everybody on them. All right. Um, and I don't remember exactly whether or not I called her. I also sometimes make calls. As you walk out of Ambassador Richardson's office, there are two desks right out front. And if I'm pretty busy in a day and I want to get something done, I sometimes will just sit down there and pick up the phone and do it while I'm thinking about it, rather than going back to my office where I might forget to do it. So, well, now, one if, of those two okay. things. If we go back to the calendar again, the interview was on Friday the 31st. Third. Uh, yeah, 31st. The 3rd right. was the first working day back. Correct. And is it accurate that you probably didn't work on the first and second? Uh, it probably did work on the first and second. Okay. When in relation, uh, I'm assuming if you made a call to Ms. Lewinsky about the job, you would not have done that without consulting with the ambassador? But correct. So you did it in his direction? Yes, correct. Do you know when in relation to the call you made, you would have spoken to him? Um, well, I, I mean, I'm with him con almost constantly, but it probably would have been the morning of the third. And do you believe that you would have made the call immediately after speaking Probably, with him about it? Probably, yes. Do you know whether he spoke on the phone with her during that conversation? I'm not aware of any conversation he had with her. Okay. Why don't you, as best you can, just sort of walk us through what you recall about the conversation? With? Uh, let's start with the one with Ms. Lewinsky when you called her. Okay. Um, I called her. I told her that um, we wanted to extend an offer <coughs> to her to come work at the mission in New York, um, that it would be a public affairs um, related position that we had discussed in the interview um, to a certain degree that it would be reporting to Ms. Rebecca Cooper, who works in our Washington office, um, and that uh, we wanted to set up a time to bring her to New York to spend about a half a day going through details and things like that. And what was her response? Um, she was uh, effusive, thanked me, said to thank the ambassador. She was thrilled and it was very nice that we had offered her the job and she was very excited. Uh, she needed some time to think about it and I said, yes, of course, I understand. Um, she said that um, I, when I told her that we wanted to bring her up to New York, she said that she thought that she would be traveling. She wasn't 100 percent sure when she'd be able to come up to New York and I said that was fine uh, and that we would touch base in another couple of weeks. All right. And then, first of all, now let's back up. Tell us about the conversation that you had with the ambassador that led to your to led to the call. calling her. Um, he called me into the office and said, um, you know, I've decided to hire uh, Monica Lewinsky. What do you think? And I said, oh, you know, that's fine. I said, um, are you sure? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, why? And I said, no, no, you know, there's no issue. Are you sure, though, you don't want to talk to anybody else? You don't want to interview anybody else? 
And he said, no, no, I think it's fine. Why don't you go ahead and give her an offer? And I said, I think we ought to bring her up to New York and actually, you know, talk to her, show her where she'd actually be working and, you know, get into more detail. And he said, yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't you call her, um, try to set something up, bring her up here, and we'll bring up Rebecca for the day, too. Why did you ask him if he wanted to interview any other people? Well, at the time, I thought that it was, you know, very quick. Um, and in retrospect, even though I was kind of hired that way, like if, after about, in fact, much quicker, after about 20 seconds, um, I, I hadn't had as much experience with him interviewing people and hiring people and meeting with them and all, that whole dynamic. I think it was the first time that that had happened that I had been participating in. Since then, he's hired probably five people in a very similar way without interviewing anybody else. So I've come to learn that it's very normal behavior. And to your knowledge, did anybody else interview prior to the offer being made to Ms. Lewinsky for the, the kind of job that, that was kind being kicked around? I think Rebecca Cooper may have talked to some people or had some people in mind for it, but not anybody that Ambassador Richardson actually interviewed. All right. At least as far as I'm aware that I was part of. Okay, so again, at the time it seemed a little quick, but since then, You've seen him act in a similar manner on several occasions. Yes. Um, all right, anything else stand out in your mind about either that conversation or the one with Ms. Lewinsky? Uh, no. Okay, now let's go up. Uh, uh, did you make clear what the position would be for her at the United Nations, or was there some sort of open-endedness when you extended this offer? Um, there was some open-endedness because it was a new position, um, which is something I think I should explain. We had somebody who left our Washington office. It was a political appointee slot. Um, and Rebecca Cooper, who is in charge of our public outreach, was very keen to have somebody in New York to serve as an assistant to her to work on public outreach efforts. And so when the person left the, the position in Washington, we wanted to reprogram the job to New York and change the job description so it would be kind of an assistant to, to Rebecca Cooper. So in that sense, yes, in our, in our minds, I mean, I knew that that's from the questions in the interview, that that's what Rebecca Cooper had in mind. It was completely consistent with um, her background and resume. Um, and so in our minds, yes. Was it written down on a piece of paper? No. Now, let's look at, we already highlighted, there's a couple other calls. I guess we can get rid of this piece of paper because we've covered okay. all of them. There you go, thanks. Okay. And now, there's a call, I think it's on this one, there was a call on November 19th mm -hmm. from your extension for 48 seconds to Ms. Lewinsky. Right. There's a call, actually I guess a few days before, on the 14th right. from Ms. Lewinsky to... Well, let's focus on that one, okay. it's next in order. Do you believe that you participated in this call? Uh, no. Do you know, um, well, first of all, what is your basis for concluding that you did not participate in it? Um, because I re every time I spoke to her, I remember initiating the call. I mean, I didn't always get through right away, but, you know, she would call me back. And so, you're, so the fact so that this is a call from her to this number, at least for a minute, it's unclear whether it was a minute or two, but somewhere in that time frame, um, that makes you believe it was not you who she spoke with. Correct. Now, if somebody calls it, number, who answers the phone? Uh, any number of people, basically any of the secretaries who are out front. Um, and it's a number that, you know, once people get their hands on, we get a lot of right. calls to that extension. Okay, so we, we have three, <coughs> three, two secretaries full time there. Isabel answers that line. I'll answer it if there's nobody around. The de our deputy ambassador in New York has a secretary. She'll answer it. We have somebody out in the, f in the entryway. They'll answer it. So, so based on the fact that um, it's a one to two minute call. Uh, is, is it accurate that any number of people could have been the person who picked up the Correct. call? Correct. <coughs> Do you have any basis to conclude who she ultimately spoke to in that conversation? I have absolutely no idea. Now, the next call that involves you. Can I interrupt for a second? Mm -hmm. um, what number did you give out to uh, Ms. Lewinsky? Do you remember in terms of when she wanted to contact the people at the United Nations? Hmm. I know I gave her my number that at one. Um, so when she wanted to reach you, she would call. Correct. Okay. I would assume so. That she she would have. Um, if she didn't know, I, I don't know how she would have gotten it otherwise. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, now the next call 
Well, we do see on well, the next column, and it also turns to go to your numbers, the one on the 19th. Right. And then we have the one on the, what is it, the 24th. Right. Now, so you don't know anything about this call on the 14th. You believe it was not you, correct? Right. But correct. you don't know what the subject matter was. Correct. Right. What, if anything, uh, was discussed on the 19th? That would be you calling her. Right. Um, I think that's about, that was about two weeks later, so after our initial conversation. <coughs> So it's, I probably just was following up. Um, and from the length of the time of the call, we obviously didn't have a conversation. It would, I think every time I called her, there was a, I would leave, I left a message and she called back. All right. So okay. she called And then the by example, we see on the um, 24th, mm -hmm. there is, a, and again, I, I have to confess, I haven't figured out totally what these discrepancies are, but clearly it, each number appears twice, and based on the timing, it appears to be the same call. Right. One's shown at a seven minutes, one is four, but in any event, it was a several minute conversation. Call. Right. What do you believe you would have spoken to her about on that occasion? Uh, on that occasion, I was calling to follow up to try to set up a time uh, for her to come to New York. Uh, did she indicate she was interested in that, or did, is this, was she stonewalling you? Or what was she did, saying? but she also said that, um, she asked me whether or not she could be honest with me, and I said, yes, of course. And she said, well, you know, would the ambassador be upset if I wanted to take a little bit more time to think about it? And I said, well, you know, no, I don't think so, not necessarily. And she said, well, because I'm looking at some other options in the private sector, I'm not 100% sure if I want to, uh, continue my work in government, and I need a little bit more time to figure that out. Um, and I said, I'm sure he, that would be okay. Um, and if it's not, I'll get back to you. But if, if not, then I'll call you in another couple of weeks, and, and we can set something up then. And we agreed to touch base again later. And did you, in fact, have uh, convey that information to the ambassador? Yes. And what was his reaction? Well, also in that in that conversation, I had the impression that she wasn't going to take the job. It was just my impression. Uh, but I, I told him that, uh, that I'd spoken with her, and it was my impression that I didn't think that she was going to take it, that she wanted to get something in the private sector. And well, he asked me, well, why? And I said, oh, because I think she's looking for something in the private sector. And he said, hmm. And I said, but she asked for some more time. Is, you know, is that OK? And he said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right, and then the next call that we see is going to be on the 5th. And let me, first of all, let me go back and show you a document. Okay. And that's going to be MS7. Okay. And now, if, if you go ahead and read the uh, typewritten part, but then also look at the little notes on the right. Mm -hmm. Tell us when you're ready. Okay. Okay, now this is, a, in essence, a thank you letter dated November 3rd um, from Ms. Lewinsky to Ambassador Richardson, correct? Correct. And then there's a note, it looks like up at the top, um, looks like Mona. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this mean, right? Right. Who, do you recognize that writing? Yes. Whose is it? Um, Ambassador Richardson. All right, and then at the bottom it says, BR, she wrote this note before we spoke last week just to thank you. And I'm assuming, uh, it's kind of squiggly, but I'm assuming that's you. Yes, that's me. All right. Uh, what's the significance of these notes? What does that mean? Uh, he basically, we received this, I think, maybe, I don't remember, but it was significantly after we had talked to her the first time. And so when it went into his inbox and he read it, he was confused because he wasn't sure if this was her saying, uh, you know, no to the job or what it was. And so he would just asked, what does this mean? And I just said, basically, it crossed in the mail, so we got it. So you were indicating that you thought she sent this to you guys before, before you offered her the job? Correct. All right. Any questions? Yeah. All right, and then I want to show you... Actually, I... But, um, but you think now, on November 3rd, an offer was extended to her? Yes. Okay. And so it would have to have been either the weekend of the 1st or 2nd, or the morning of the 3rd that the ambassador spoke to you and, it, and indicated to you that he wanted to extend an offer to her. Correct. That, that's very cool. Okay. Yeah. But when you say this was, uh, you, were, you were received this significantly after. Yeah, in the, it was a hard copy. I mean, it was in a mail, in an envelope copy. Right. 
Although it is dated November 3rd, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it arrived oh, a few no. days after that, but, but you have a recollection that it received right. it significantly after November Yeah, 3rd. but it takes a long time for the mail to come through, okay. typically, uh, because it comes into a central place, and they log <coughs> most letters and things like that, so sometimes we get things, you know, two weeks late. Okay. So. Now, um, go ahead and show you a couple more exhibits. I think to clear the clutter, we're done with sure. this one. Okay. I'm actually done we're with done this one. one. Then we're going to ask you one more thing on we're this. We're done with this one too. Yes. Okay. those and look at the one underneath this it one? first. Okay. Yes. Now, if you look at, um, I guess what I'd ask you to do is look at this memo, which, what number is that? That's MS9. Yep. And then also direct your attention to the last entry on MS4. Okay. And once you've looked at those, let me know. Okay. Now, is this a, this is a memo that you would have... Perhaps also just the, the other document, also just get a full feel for what... Right, but that's actually in a, a couple of days later, so I want to look at that okay. after. Okay. Um, it's in terms of the first one, MS9, this is a memo that you sent to Ambassador Richardson, correct? Correct. And you're addressing two topics, correct? Correct. And the second topic is indicating to the ambassador that she's declined the position. Correct. So this would have been done shortly after you were told by Ms. Lewinsky she was not taking the job. Correct. All right. Now, in terms of trying to date the time of this, mm -hmm. there's no date on the memo, but just sort okay. of calling your attention to the first section, which is on an unrelated person, Ali Olivas. Mm -hmm. There's a reference about two-thirds of the way down about something that had been sent on Friday, January 2nd. Right. So would you agree that this would have been sent after, after the 2nd? And then direct... I'm yeah. sorry. Right. No, correct. And then directing your attention to the last entry mm -hmm. on Exhibit 4, that's a call from, uh, I'll represent to you that the D. Finnerman, that is an address or a residence where Ms. Lewinsky sometimes stays. Oh, okay. So that is a call from a Lewinsky-related number to your extension okay. on the 5th of January. Okay. Do you believe that that would have been the call that she would have told you uh, she was declining the job? Um... Yes, although it's shorter than I would have expected, but... Do you believe there could have been more than one call or perhaps some messages? There could have been, yeah. I mean, I, again, I, I, re I remember that, or at least I, th I think, that every time I initiated a call to her and she was the person who was calling me back. Well, actually, and, and perhaps Mr. Lerner was right to begin with, you should look at the next one. Okay. Um, and you'll notice there... It's, these are, these are records of pages, mm -hmm. and it's, this is from Monica Lewinsky's pager, and it shows that at 8.54 a.m. on January 7th, right. there was a page saying, please call Mona Sutphin. Right. Do you recall leaving such a page? Yes. And why would you have left that page? Uh, that was actually after she declined the, the position. Okay, so then, she, if this was after she declined, then... Does it appear that she probably declined on around the 5th or 6th or somewhere in there? Yeah, although it could have been, yes. Okay, now then why would it you... It could have been earlier in the week, though, because Friday the 2nd as well, okay, possibly. And, but. and then why did you page Ms. Lewinsky on the 7th? Well, when she declined, <coughs> uh, we got into a discussion about whether or not she could call, she wanted to call and thank the ambassador in person. And, I, you know, I figured he probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, and so I said, well, you know, he's very busy. Why don't I talk to him and find out if he's going to have time to take a call? Because um, we do that, we have to set up a time in advance to make it happen. And, uh, and I said I would get back to her on whether or not it was appropriate. And so you think that was your no. call, paging her to let her know whether she... Yeah, she then asked me to page. She said, if, if you don't get through on my telephone number, you can leave a page. Did she give you a page number? Is yeah. this your handwriting? Yeah, that's my handwriting. <coughs> And by that, that's on exhibit um, MS2A, I'm sorry, IW2A. There's a pager number written at the top. Correct. When do you believe you would have gotten that from her? 
Um, I got that from her in one of the previous conversations, but I don't remember. So it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been at the time of the interview. It would have no, been a later. No, it was a later conversation. All right. Okay, and then finally, um, um, did you ever uh, have a conversation with Ambassador Richardson in which he indicated to you that he wanted you to call Monica Lewinsky and find out what the status of her acceptance or rejection of the job offer was? Yes. Um, at some point, um, I don't remember exactly what day, he called and said, um, you know, what's the story with Monica Lewinsky? Um, he'd been having a he said he had been having a conversation with Rebecca Cooper about what we were going to do in terms of restructuring the office with her um, public affairs component. And I said, I don't know. Um, and he said, well, you know, we have to find out what the story is because, you know, it's been a long time and she has to make up her decision, make a decision one way or another call her and find out, you know, she can't have any more time. She has to let us know what she's going to do. So I said, okay. Do you have any idea when that conversation was? Um, obviously it was before this. I don't remember if it was bef right before the holidays or not. It was somewhere it, in December, January time. So it could have been just before January 5th or something? Or well, something. He, was, he was away mm -hmm. for a while, so it could have been in late December. I, and then I went away as well. So we may have had that conversation in, in you know, late December and then I just kind of waited to do it, or it could have been, uh, it could have been in the first part of January, like on yeah. the second. So. Okay, a couple, two more topics, and then we're done. Um, did you have any conversations with Vernon Jordan in December or January of December 97, January 98? Um, it's possible. How so? <laughs> uh, we bumped into him on the uh, Delta shuttle at some point when we were coming down to Washington. Any discussion in that conversation about trying to get a job for anybody or Monica Lewinsky? No. Other than that, possibly bumping into one another, did you have any other conversations with Vernon Jordan? No. Okay. Um, would you have been involved in any t either setting up or arranging for or connecting any phone calls between Ambassador Richardson and Vernon Jordan in that time frame? No. Did you attend any meetings between Ambassador Richardson and Vernon Jordan? No, I did not. Do you have any knowledge of whether or not they were meeting, and, and if so, what they were meeting about? Uh, I have knowledge of a meeting, of a breakfast meeting they had sometime in January. I'll represent to you that, that we've gotten records that indicate that was January 6th. Okay. And do you know what the subject matter of that meeting was? I have no idea. All right, and then finally, do you ever call the White House? Oh, yes. And who do you call at the White House? Um, <coughs> Usually, well, I call a lot of people at the National Security Council, but I, I assume you mean the White House proper. Yes. Um, sometimes people in the administra in the Chief of Staff's office, usually relatively low down, people in the Office of Administration sometimes, um, in the Chief of Staff's office, um, not too many people, I suppose, I guess. Do you ever place calls to the White House for the ambassador so he can talk to someone? No, I, I don't place calls. For the ambassador. Do you know? Do you know whether the ambassador ever calls uh, to speak to the president at the White House? Yes. Do you know how? I'm sorry. At least I think so. Yes. <laughs> do you know how those calls are placed? Uh, usually Isabel will place them. Okay, to the president. Uh, or, or in order to get a hold of the. President. In order to get a hold of the president, yes. Okay, and what do you base that understanding on? Uh, she came with him from Washington when he was a congressman, so she does a lot of things that are related to political people, she'll place those calls. She also places calls. I don't place calls. I don't really do the secretarial functions. So. so it's a supposition on your part, but uh, do you have any, do you ever recall any instance where you either were present when Ms. Watkins placed a call to the White House to get the president or told you she had or anything like that? Uh, I don't recall any of any specific instance. Do you know whether Ambassador Richardson places the call himself, whether he has Ms. Watkins or whether he has someone else do it. Do you know what number is used to get a hold of the president at the White House? I don't know what number is used. Okay, anything else? I think that's all we have. Huh? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Deficit is concluded at 12.5.34. This weekend on our companion network, C-SPAN 2, Book TV features programs on the Civil War. Saturday afternoon at 12.30,
author Jean Baker discusses her book, Mary Todd Lincoln, A Biography. She talks about